Hey guys, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com and in this video I'll cover phase distortion synthesis and an extension called vector phase shaping synthesis. And the latter sounds a little bit like this. So let's build this from scratch with a new ensemble and I'll begin by creating a macro for phase distortion synthesis. The first thing we want to do is make a phase counter which as I mentioned in the previous video we can mimic with a ramp oscillator. In order to control the ramp oscillator, I'll take an incoming MIDI pitch and translate it to a frequency using the exponential F module. We'll give the ramp oscillator an amplitude of 1, which means it will ramp from 0 to 1. And I'll restart it at the beginning of a new gate press. And what the phase counter does is it tells us what our position is in the wave cycle of the oscillator. So at any given point in time, this gives us a value between 0 and 1, where 0 is the beginning of the wave cycle and 1 is the end. And we'll use that value to calculate our oscillator output. In the case of phase distortion synthesis, we will split the ramp signal in two, um, depending on its value, and calculate the first half in using one macro, and we'll calculate the second half using another macro. So in order to make this happen, I'll create a compare module and a knob named D. And Anytime you have a knob controlling a module that's running at audio rate, it's good programming practice to translate the event signal coming from the knob into an audio signal using an audio smoother module. So our knob D is a value from 0 to 1, and whenever our phase is less than D, we want to calculate our signal in one way and whenever it's greater than D we want to calculate our signal in another way. So we'll connect the greater than output of the compare module to the position input of a selector module. This is a pretty inefficient way to do things. If we were in core we could make this happen a lot quicker but um, since I'd like to keep these tutorials in primary, um, we're just going to have to accept the CPU hit. There's no efficient way to calculate an if-then statement in primary uh, at audio rate. You can do it pretty well with events, but audio is a different matter. So next let's create a macro that will shape our phase when um, the phase is less than our D value. So for this macro, I'll want D and X as inputs, where X is the phase. And this will be running into the zero input of our selector scanner. And next, let's duplicate this macro. And the second macro will be um, for shaping our phase when X is greater than D. You can make this setup somewhat faster by setting the curve mode of the selector module to none in the function tab of the properties. Um, but again, just using core is a much more efficient way to save some CPU with this algorithm. And the reason is we'll be calculating both of these macros for every sample, even though we'll only end up using the output from one of them and in core you can avoid that. Alright, so let's shape our phase when the phase is less than D and the um, function for this is we're gonna divide X over D times 2. 
So this is fairly easy, and it defines our oscillator during the first part of the cycle when x is less than d. And next, let's create our function for when x is greater than d. And this one is a little more complicated, but it's still fairly simple. We're going to subtract x from d, and we're going to divide it over 1 minus d. And next we can add 1 and multiply by 0.5. So this macro represents the second half of our phase shaping function. And the reason why this algorithm as a whole is called phase distortion synthesis is because we're taking our original incoming phase and distorting it with these phase shapers. And we'll use the distorted phase to calculate a cosine wave. So once we have our signal passed through the selector module, we can add a cosine function from the math menu. And we'll connect this to an envelope and a scope so that we can look at what's happening. So I created a single cycle scope as a quick tips video a while back. And I'll be using it an awful lot for every time I make an oscillator, for example, because they're extraordinarily useful. And um, we'll multiply the output by a simple AR gate. And this will just prevent clicking whenever we uh, press or release a new MIDI note. All right, so once we connect this to the audio outputs, we'll be ready to go. And depending on the value of d, we can get a number of different waveforms. When d is equal to 0 0.5, we'll end up with just a simple sine wave. And um, as we shape it around, we can um, distort it. into almost a saw or ramp type of a shape. Alright, so in order to go from phase distortion synthesis to vector phase shaping synthesis, uh, we need to just replace our phase shaping macros, and we need to introduce a second variable named v. And V will also um, be run through an audio smoother, so we can turn it um, and not produce clicks in our audio output. So let's run our value of V into both of our phase shaping macros. And in phase distortion synthesis, the value of v is set to a um, constant value of 0 0.5. In vector phase shaping synthesis, we get to move the value of v around. And this allows us to create many different types of waveforms that are unobtainable with phase distortion synthesis. So our first macro becomes x times v divided over d. And for our second phase shaper, we need to replace our last two values. The division is going to remain the same. But instead of adding 1 and then multiplying by 0.5, um, we need to first multiply by 1 minus v and then add v to the output of that. <laughs> 
So take V, subtract 1, and multiply it by the output of our division, and then add V. The final output of this oscillator can be pretty useful for various types of synthesis, um, especially formant synthesis when you set the value of V to be equal to a whole number, um, and then modulate D around the 0 0.5 area. Um, you can get some pretty cool effects. So everything else can remain the same. We just needed to edit our phase shapers. Probably the worst problem with vector phase shaping is it creates a substantial amount of aliasing, um, especially when the D value is close to zero or close to one. Um, there have been some algorithms proposed to reduce the aliasing. I wasn't really able to get great results out of any of them. Um, they seem to be fairly circumstantial, and in any event, would be very inefficient to program in reactor primary. Definitely would require going into core to do properly. Alright, so this is Salamander Anagram with reactortutorials.com and um, I'll be covering oscillators all month long.